you know the situation, you are better, but how to proceed, which advantages to hold, which to change, how to go from here. This video will be about that. It's one of the skills I earn, only learn to master after I became a grandmaster. It's not easy. I cannot promise I can give you sort of a recipe how to do this, uh, but I can tell you how I think and this uh, we will do with this game. Uh, it's from the Bundesliga, and I know that uh, some of you have um, asked if we could have the, the game notation not only in the notes but also on the video, and it's coming right up uh, when we when our technician comes back from summer holiday. Anyway, let's get on with it. I'm white against uh, Vladimir Chuchilov, uh, and it's played in the Bundesliga in 2006 in early in, in late. January. Um, Chuchilov is, uh, is, I think he's representing Belgium, but he is of course uh, from Russia and is known as one of the best coaches in the world. Uh, he has also had pretty good results as a player himself and is, is a, a, a absolute decent grandmaster, um, like myself. Anyway, and here I decided that I had I had noticed that he against the C3 Sicilian he usually doesn't put his knight on C6. So I thought ah this could be clever. I'm not sure it is, uh, but it's uh, well the Alapin Sicilian. The Alapin Sicilian. Okay. And all this is known. Bishop E3. Uh, there are many other lines you can play. Knight A3 that might be a good move. Um, I'm not really sure. I like uh, the position with the isolated queen's pawn. I QP. Uh, we will uh, delve into that later because it's a very important structure that you can get a lot. It's uh, it's actually probably even um, more Im important than, than some of the other structures that we have have looked at. So I'm waiting, getting the uh, the best for last uh, or the middle or what you call it. Anyway, this is all well-known theory. Uh, Putting the bishop on this diagonal, uh, you could argue that it could also be on this diagonal, and uh, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in this video, but also later. Where does the bishop belong? And it depends a little bit on where, how Black sets up his pawns on the king side. Does he do h6 or g6? But we'll get back to that. Castle. A3. Uh, I'm uh, avoiding uh, this move. For instance, if I go queen e2 immediately, he go knight b4. I can show it actually. It's probably easier. If I go something like this, uh, then this is a bit annoying, and bishop is coming here, and this was not part of the plan. So a3 first, then uh, it's keeping the knight here, and queen e2. Bishop b7, and I put the rook on uh, d1, and sometimes you put your rook on c1, but in general, in this structure, with uh, black pawns like this and white pawns like this, you want the rooks here and here. In uh, This is where the action takes place. Well, the c file is not that interesting. So, as a general rule of thumb, if you're in doubt, put your rooks on d1 and e1. Uh, this is where they will have most impact. With an, a weak pawn like uh, like uh, the D pawn, uh, black uh, white has has free uh, play for his pieces um, and the possibility to push uh, the pawn forward and open the position when he's better developed or more ready for it. And and most of all, white's plan consists in attacking the black king. Rook 88. And you could argue that the rook maybe does not belong on d8 and e8 for black. Maybe it belongs on c8 and e8, c8 and d8 and so on and so on. Bishop b1. Uh, and getting out of the way, uh, white might consider something like this or this to create some threats on h7. Rook f8. And uh, of course, she likes that it's x reign the queen, rook fe1, 
White is finishing the setup. Queen b8, getting out of uh, this rex ray from, from the rook. And um, in this position, I think uh, the main move is bishop g5. And, um, and that's not a bad move, of course. Uh, I decided to, uh, to play a, a different move. I was a little bit annoyed about some black maybe had some ideas with knight g4. And also, it, it's nice to have no back rank problem. So I played a3. This is not really a standard move, but it's not a bad move. And uh, anyway, we, I thought we were out of theory. And here black uh, decided to go d6. This was definitely not uh, strictly necessary at, the, at, at this time, but it does blunt uh, this bishop. And here's the rule of thumb that's almost always correct. Whenever black goes g6, you put the uh, bishop on the other diagonal. But if, for instance, here black went h6, then white, of course, would do something like this. And, and, and the hold on, on the king side is severe. He's already threatening something like knight e5, uh, something like this is a serious threat already. And, and this, this knight has to go uh, stay there. So g6 and bishop a2. And this, this is a very important rule. Whenever he goes g6, you want to go bishop a2 because this pawn's pawn actually is weaker now because he does not control this square and this square and this square. So black would, for instance, uh, if he had a rook on f8 that was covering f7, we would uh, be able to push it away with bishop h6, and there is a room for a knight here on d5. So so f7 becomes weaker, and white d5 it becomes stronger. Here he made a, a novelty. I think the, the main move was queen a8, Bishop f8 looks natural. He wants to put it here and uh, and sort of solid uh, solidify his king position and uh, and and maybe later on pressurize the weak pawn. And I decided, and as maybe it's um, a, a logical move here, it could be something like this, and he would probably go back something or, or to g7. I don't know, um, but I decided that that this was the time for this push. Uh, also, another thing that's important is it's a Bundesliga match and uh, and you really don't want to lose. And after this, I thought white would always have a slight advantage. Uh, and, and I'm getting rid of the isolated queen pawn and we'll have an open position with more or less a symmetrical pawn structure where I have the attacking chances. And this is something I, I like. It's like you're playing for only two results. And it's uh, slightly simple here. And already you see that this is now a serious weakness. Um, I'm probably already threatening to take it and give a check on c4. So he has to be careful here. So he went here. He vacated that square. Um, and attacking bishop. And, and I would love to move it, but then comes knight to f5, and, uh, and, and this is, is annoying again. So instead I played take, take, and this move, um, and, and sort of pinning the knight. And of course, uh, this diagonal, is very nice, and I'm, I have a very huge threat here. I'm threatening this move, uh, and and he will be made it. So, um, so, so he could, he should probably play knight c6 and let me have uh, the, the two rooks for a queen, and that's just a clear pawn up. Um, by the way, he should probably have taken here. That would probably have been smarter. Um, I think, but anyway, he played queen b8 and attacking it and here and take. And I'm 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 uh, I'm I'm thinking I'm slightly better here, uh, and I'm having some attacking chances. Even though he's pus he's he's got a lot of pieces on the king side, I still have really good chances of of doing something 
for instance, I would love to have my queen here or here and play something like this and so on. And this bishop here is, of course, very strong. And yet, took. Yeah, and of course, uh, something like, uh, like this is, is, is very unpleasant, so he doesn't want to, 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 to have that. Uh, the pin will be very hard to get out of. Uh, I will just exchange queens, I see. So, queen e4. Um, and here, well, if he goes knight f5, I'm slightly better, uh, but it's probably nothing serious. He tried to exchange uh, queens, um, and here's white to move. And of course, a very uh, obvious move is this move. And I'm, I'm clearly having a good time here, for sure. Uh, and he went, he has the problem that this is a, it's an annoying pin and I might be threatening something like this and if he hit that it would go here and here. So that was a very cool uh, range of arrows I made there. Uh, he went um, rook e8. Another thing is, after this move, I might be threatening this move um, here, and the queen, when it goes, I go here. Okay. So he went here. If he goes to c8, uh, then uh, knight d4 is just winning. Um, so, and here, knight d4, knight f5, it's not clear because of the pin down here. Um, I think. Yeah. So, instead, why to move? You're, you feel that you are much better here. You're having uh, an attack. You have more active pieces. Um, but how to proceed? And I found a very good move, in my opinion. Thing is, with, with the maneuver to knight e4, it's, it, I have knight e5, and it's, it's nothing special. So you see that you're calculating and calculating, and then you suddenly see, okay, this pin we see here, it's also going the other way. It's also going this way. And after this move, threatening mate, he has to take and you suddenly realize, oh, and you thought you were attacking. You thought everything was about attacking the king. And suddenly you switch that until um, uh, to something you could call domination. Uh, white is simply dominating due to this very, very, very nasty pin. And this bishop here is, is dominating the position. And after something like this, um, that you only have to find one good move here, and this move just stops everything. You just and and this is a very important thing when you when you're trying to when you get this kind of advantages. The only important thing is to keep it. Then it's gonna win. You know it's gonna win. Just find out how to keep the advantage, and you will win. You will win. So don't worry about it. Uh, don't worry about winning now. Win later. And I mean that. Don't win now. Win later. Because then you're sure you will win. And uh, this <laughs> so you need to have the bishop, uh, keeping the bishop on f6 uh, to, to keep this pin alive. And also it's very nice after h6, a4. Also you don't want, you want your, uh, your pawn to be on sort of the right squares after king h7 king of one uh, covering the rook because you're ready for this move and this move and then you'll be able to move the knight because the rook is now covered so there will be no pin okay king g8 b3 and remember like i said keep the advantage keep the advantage only thing that matters it's gonna win somehow covering the rook c4 h5, and this is the structure you want, so he can't move at all. b5, take, take, and okay. And we have to uh, sort of 
formulate a, a plan here. Uh, how to break it down. You don't want your knight here because then he will get two. He, he might be able to get two pieces for the rook. So you want to win something, but you have wanted to do it in an absolutely controlled way. And uh, the most, the simple, well, there's a lot of way to win this kind of position. Uh, he cannot move. His, his position is in rigor mortis. Uh, <laughs> so, so he is, he's basically dead. He just doesn't know it yet. Uh, the walking dead, that's just standing, right? He can only move the king. And after this move, uh, he decided to resign. Um, there is, well, it's over. Um, he could play something like g5. You just go back and, and you're coming to f5. And this is um, like this. And, <laughs> and of course, uh, this wins, well, a lot of things. Um, so, and uh, maybe this was not a perfect example of the transformation of advantages. Well, I did transpose from a good attacking position into an ending that was absolutely winning because he was paralyzed. And this is one of the things you look for. You look for if you can, like attacking chances, that's sort of a temporary uh, thing. It's a temporary uh, thing that can disappear, especially if you make a slight mistake or something, or you misplay the attack, then it's gone. But something like this, this uh, eternal pin, uh, and he, him not being able to move any of his pieces without losing material, uh, that's more of a permanent advantage. So basically what you really want to do when you are looking for this kind of transformation of advantages is to change your uh, sort of temporary advantage into a permanent one. This is a very good rule of thumb. You want a permanent advantage, so you're looking for that. Uh, and you want, of course, to be sure that it's not a permanent advantage, that's just a draw. So this is also <laughs> kind of important. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it was uh, nice for me to have a little recall on uh, putting Chuchilov in this position, even though he is, of course, a very strong player. Uh, thank you for watching. This was, this was GM Talks.